All right, so I'm going to shoot a short video to uh, attempt to describe what I was talking about before. All right, let's uh, think of this in terms of just a regular 2-5-1 progression. Uh, I suppose I could start this in C. So um, if I were using like just Bill Evans' left-hand voicings, they'd be rootless. On five, this is diatonic five, lots of ways to alter five. So let's suppose that I do a standard alt voicing, which contains the seventh, the sharp nine, the third, and you can interpret this upper note as either the flat 13 or the sharp five. I think of it as the sharp five. Okay. So let's suppose I'm playing that voicing with my left hand. What I'd be doing with my right hand improvising would probably be more likely to be in super locrian, in this case G super locrian from A flat melodic minor. Okay. But I realize that you're saying uh, that it's not diminished. Well, here's the thing. When I play this voicing, or if I improvise in super locrian over it, I'm just as inclined to play F diminished 7th, okay? Because this is the finished sound over G. All right? So what we have is G in the bass. We have the 7th of the chord, the flat 9 of the chord, the 3rd of the chord, and the 5th of the chord. Again, the 7th of the chord, but up here we've got the sharp 9, the 3rd, and the sharp 5 or flat 13, okay? Uh, and the finished sound gives you that, and I can keep F diminished seventh in my left hand as I continue to solo in G super locrian. Something like that, okay? So while I was up here and doing all this stuff, I was just playing the part of the voicing that isn't redundant to the uh, G super locrian part. Okay, assuming that G is still in the bass, I could have played any inversion of that F diminished seventh chord because they're all enharmonically the same. Doesn't matter where that is as long as it's over G being used as a substitute and part of this voicing. Okay, so with G in the bass, the left hand is a diminished, the related diminished seventh chord. The right hand is the alt voicing. Okay. And over this whole combination, G super locrian from A flat melodic minor. You can do this in another key. Let's do it in the key of G, uh, two, five, one. Okay, so now I'm on F sharp diminished seventh with my left hand, but that's the part of this altered voicing. Okay? So this is D7 alt, so we've got the third, the fifth, the seventh, the flat nine, the third, the sharp five or flat 13, the seven, and then way up on the top, I can alternate between the sharp nine and the flat nine. I'm sure you've heard that sound before. But even if I take this right hand away, those tones come from the super locrian of D, and I can preserve this F sharp diminished seventh chord in my left hand. Okay, in that case, I resolve to the fifth of, D, of uh, G minor. So that was supposed to be a D super locrian, so A minor, D super locrian, okay, and G minor. So uh, I can play the uh, D7 alt voicing in my left hand when I'm doing that kind of run. I can play the uh, upper structure diminished seventh chord of D7 flat nine and do the exact same thing. Okay, so that's just the diminished seventh chord over D. 
rest of the voicing is the alt voicing, and that just uh, outlines the rest of the pitches that are left over, or most of them anyway, that come from superlocrian of D. And that voicing, with the presence, the simultaneous presence of the actual perfect fifth and the sharp five or flat 13, I think is what makes it so uh, exciting sound. When you get both of those things happening at the same time, get like the best of both worlds. Here it is on C, on C7 alt. But I could have just as easily done that on G diminished seventh, thinking of G diminished seventh as the upper structure of C7 alt, okay? So here's C in the bass, my left hand is playing G7, and my right hand can be playing either the rest of the alt voicing in either inversion or in C super locrian. It wouldn't have mattered if I was playing G diminished seventh with my left hand or the full C7 uh, altered voicing. You know, it, it makes no difference in that case. That was on the alt voicing. That was on the diminished seventh chord. In either case, C would be in the bass in the context of a, a 2 5 1 and F. So uh, if I'm in if I'm in F, I'm starting on uh, G minor nine, rootless. I can play C seven alt by assuming that the bass player has got the C. My left hand is playing G diminished seventh. That covers the flat nine of the chord. Okay. Excuse me. That's the seventh. That's the flat nine. Beg your pardon. I forgot what key I was in for a second. Okay, so play the rest of that voicing, but if I'm thinking in terms of C altered dominant with C on the bottom, just because my left hand portion of the voicing is a G diminished seventh chord, doesn't mean that I can't also, also use uh, C super locrian, because that's the finished sound of the voicing anyway, okay? So uh, either way, to F works exactly the same way, okay? And remember, I'm only considering that diminished seventh chord as being the upper structure of C7, okay? Which already contains the flat nine alteration. So if I just play any of those diminished seventh chords with the alt voicing on top and C in the bass, got the perfect storm for that very common uh, jazz mannerism. So uh, hopefully that made sense to you, and that's what I was trying to get across earlier. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Bye-bye.